Welcome to part two of my WWDC coverage. I hope you guys made it through the last video. I know it was pretty long, but I just like to give, you know, full in-depth my thoughts. So hopefully it didn't bore you guys too much that, you know, you left some good comments, maybe even a video response or two. So this video is going to be sort of the same thing. However, I'll be talking about iOS 5 instead of Mac OS 10 line. And as you guys guessed, my next video on WWDC will be about iCloud. So before I get too much into iOS, I do have to warn you that this is probably going to be a long video, kind of like the last one. And I do also have to warn you that, you know, I'm not up to date on the whole iOS device thing. The most recent iOS device I have is this guy right here, the first generation. This thing can't even run iOS 4, so I have no experience with iOS 4. Um, I barely even use this anymore. It's just kind of like a last minute backup. If like, you know, I don't have this or something, and I just need this. Maybe I have some Wi-Fi on the go or something. So I really, I'm not exactly as up to date on iOS as I want to be. I do hope I can get one of the iPhone 5s this fall. Hopefully that comes. But, um, so this is going to be a video on iOS 5, so before I get too far into it, there's just a few little housekeeping things I'd like to mention. So at the start of the keynote, Apple, as usual, they just list all their specs, you know. Well, I really shouldn't say at the start of the keynote, at the start of, like, you know, the iOS portion of the keynote. Jonathan and I went over all, like, you know, the housekeeping sort of things, you know. They just stated how much market share they have. You know, iOS has gotten up to 44% market share. And the big thing about this is that, yeah, sure, it might have been out before Android, but the thing is that this is with like what two devices maybe three if you include the iPod touch how many devices is Android on hundreds you know so three devices to have 44 percent market share is absolutely insane that just tells you how much people love iOS they've also announced that they have 200 million iOS devices sold which is absolutely crazy that's that's a very big number and 25 million of those have been iPads in just 14 months so that does include um, iPad, I believe iPad 1 and iPad 2 like combined, 25 million, which is just outstanding in 14 months. So that's just crazy. I and mean, once again, that just says how much people really love these devices. They also mentioned that they've had 14 billion downloads from the App Store. Now, <laughs> when the iPhone 4 came out, I think they had what, like 2 billion, maybe 3 billion? It's jumped to 14 billion in a year. That's crazy. You know, that's just... How many how many apps are really downloaded every second? Like from here to now, it's probably like a thousand apps. It's just absolutely crazy. It's gro it's grown exponentially. Just the amount of applications is just crazy. And so this is definitely going to continue with um, all these devices, especially now with the Mac apps or all the Mac apps that they're going to have sold. It's just going to be crazy. So that's pretty much it just for the housekeeping part. Now, just like Lion, Apple went through 10 things about the iPhone 5, or really iOS 5, that people have been you know, begging for. And so now I will go over each of those in pretty good detail. So they announced that they're going to be sporting 200 new features in iOS 5, which is great. Um, all those features fit into, you know, a little device like this, maybe even a big device like an iPad. So, you know, Apple is really doing a lot of work with iOS, so let's just go ahead and we'll jump right in. The first one was probably everyone's, you know, most wanted feature. Notifications, you know, there's better notifications that are finally here. So what were they before? I'm sure you guys know, but just in case you don't, on the iPhone, say you're playing a game, you know, it's a very intense game, you know, you're very into it, you know, you're you really have to be on your game to in order to win. You're on the last level and you get a text message. And so what happens? It completely interrupts your game. It just stops it stone cold where it's at and says your text message. And you have to hit either like read or cancel in order to go back. And so that's a huge pain in the butt if you're playing a game. If you're trying to do something where you're really concentrating, all of a sudden a notification comes up and you can't do anything until you, you know, do something about it. That had to go, and Apple realized that. They said, no, they've pushed 100 billion notifications since they've come out. And so they said, you know, people love these notifications so much that they need a better way to, you know, view them. And so they said they agree, and this is what they've done. They now have its own, like, own separate application called Notification Center, and it's a place for notifications. Now, I do have to admit, admit that they kind of just took this right from Android. However, I do feel that they did improve upon it. So... It's kind of like Windows does, I guess, with OS X. They do take a lot of features, but they kind of put their own twist on them. OS X's taking a few features from you know, not Linux, maybe even a feature or two for here from Windows. I really don't think so, but they might have. And so, But they put their own spin on them. And this is kind of what they've done. They kind of took this idea from Android, where you take it um, from the top of the screen and you slide down, and it gives you all your notifications, any new updates, any new phone calls, any new text messages. Maybe someone re at replied you on Twitter, and so you'll be able to see all that right from here. And they also did that right on the home screen. 
So now when you fire up your home screen, there will be like you know a notification center here. So you can say missed call from Johnny Appleseed, a text message from his sister-in-law, and so an uh, out reply from his brother. So then you can just slide right on that phone call, and it takes you right to that phone where the phone app where you can call him right back. And so uh, if you slide uh, the slide the text message notification, it takes you right into the messaging application, so you can text his sister-in-law back, and so et cetera, et cetera. So it not only does it now tell you like previously it just told you, but all you did was slide, and you you had to go find those notifications by yourself. Now it takes you right to them, so that saves a lot of time. If you know someone called you, if you're expecting a call, you missed it, and you want to call him back as soon as possible, you slide that, you hit dial, and you're calling him. And the part of this that they've improved upon from the whole, the whole Android thing, where you slide down, they now have like a live stock ticker of stocks you're following. Uh, right in the, the stocks application, they have the current weather. So it's kind of like uh, the HTC Sense, where they have the weather right on like the home page. It's sort of like that, but it's on you know it's on that little notification center. So moving on to the next feature, this one wasn't as big for me. Like if I had an uh, iPhone 5 with iOS 5 on, or an or an iPhone 4, if somehow I was running iOS 5, I wouldn't really use this because I'm not too big into you know subscriptions like magazines and stuff like that. The only, the only subscriptions I really believe in, like I really use, are YouTube subscriptions, which you don't need this app for. So the next, the next feature here is newsstand. So that's basically a place for magazines, you know, just different things you can subscribe to, which is very cool. A lot of people will use it. However, I'm just not one of them. But I do think it's great that Apple, you know, Sports Illustrated, all like a whole different kind of, um, a whole bunch of gaming magazines, tech magazines, Mac magazines, PC magazines, all these different kinds of magazines, every topic you can think of. Apple has been in touch with that company and they've gotten um, deals with them and probably contracts to be a part of this subscription service. So it's very cool that Apple reaches out and tries to please as many people as they possibly can. The next one is also something that a lot of people really wanted and that is Twitter integration. Now say for instance you, you have your camera open and say you're at a concert, you just took a picture or whatever and you want to share it on Twitter. Before you would have to go back to the home screen, go into your Twitter application and then type out a new tweet and then attach that image. Well now, all to, simply what you can do is right from the camera app, you go to share, Twitter, and it opens up a new dialog box where it has already has that image attached to it because you just took it, and you could say, this is awesome tweet. And it just tweets right from the camera application. So this is built right into iOS 5. You can tweet, I believe, from like anywhere. Um, if you take a picture or you take a video, you can instantly tweet it right there. You know, any, um, and you actually log in in the settings so that any um, applications that use Twitter they just use that login. So you don't have to log into Twitter for every application that uses it because since it's built right into the operating system, every application can read that and then so therefore you're automatically logged in on Twitter on wherever you go on your phone. And they mentioned in the keynote that there's a billion tweets sent every week. So I think we're all kind of guilty about contributing to that. But, you know, just a billion tweets a week is crazy and I'm sure this will only make it a lot more. So the next feature they announced for uh, iOS was, you know, an updated Safari. Safari covers about two-thirds of the whole mobile browsing market share, which is absolutely great. It's a great browser. Um, based on previous, you know, I guess recent in the news attacks on the Mac platform, I wouldn't say it's the most secure browser, but for iOS it seems more secure. So um, Safari is a very fast browser, very stable browser, and now they have a new feature called Safari Reader. And so this will kind of work hand in hand with iCloud, which I'll get into in my next video. But um, this basically, if you if you come to an article that's kind of long, you're not in the mood to read it now, or you're kind of busy, but you want to read it later. I guess you could just bookmark it, but reading list makes it much more convenient because now you can add it to your reading list. And as as long as you're connected to the internet, I believe this works over 3G and Wi-Fi, then it'll sync back to your other devices too. So if I if I'm on my iPhone and say like, I don't want to read this article on my iPhone, on your iPhone, the screen's as big. I want to read it on my iPad where I have a 9 inch screen I can zoom in pan around real nice and the text is nice and big and I won't go blind trying to read it my corneas won't burst out of my head. So you can just add that to your reading list, walk over here, pick up your iPad or pick it up when you get home and it's there. You know, you didn't have to plug into your computer and sync it because it's just on your reading list. So then you could just read it right then. So it's just kind of a time saver, kind of a convenient feature. I would use it if I had these devices. Probably the most demanded feature of Safari is tabbed browsing. Now much like your browser on your computer, if you do a Command T on OS X or a Control T on Windows, you can open up a new tab. You can have various tabs across in uh, your browser, your bar there, and so you can have different pages open all at once. You can do this too on the iDevices, on iOS devices. However, it's kind of a clumsy way to do it. You know, you have to hit the plus button and then you can see your windows and then you can swipe between them or on the iPad you can pick one 
and then you tap it and then you're there but you know now all it does is it simply has that tab interface so now you can just tap on a tab you're there tap on a tab you're there tap on a tab you're there you can rearrange your tabs however you'd like you know opening a new tab doesn't do that animation where it zooms out creates a new tab you know that create that just it's time wasted really it's a nice animation but time is wasted so if you just want lightning fast tabs you know tab browsing works great in safari judging by the demonstration they did you know i would definitely use tab browsing I'm not sure if it's going to be like the only way to do it or, or whether you'll be able to go back to the, the previous way. But either way, I, w I would definitely do the tab browsing because it just looks so much faster, so much more simple, and so much more convenient. The next app they touched on was Reminders. Now, while this is a very convenient app, I don't think it really deserves, you know, top 10. And it does do some very cool things. So, say for example, um, I'm at work and I, I'm, and I go into work, say, at 4 o'clock. And I'm not going to come out of there until 10 o'clock. And so I'm told I need to call my sister when I leave work. But you know, after, you know, what's that, six hours of work, you're probably going to forget. So you could set your iPhone, like, you can use the Maps application to put, like, a sort of like a fence around where you work. And as soon as you leave work, your phone will go off. Like, the satellite or the GPS will track you. And as soon as you get out of, like, wherever you work at, your phone will start vibrating. You can look it up, call a sister. So it, it just does really cool things like that. You know, you're at the store. As soon as you set your location to the store, when you get to the store, your phone will ring, and then you look at it, oh, I need to get milk, too. So you can just uh, remind yourself of these things. It's a very, very cool feature. There's some very cool technologies about it, but I just don't think it really deserved to be, you know, top 10 features. The next feature of iOS is the camera. Now, this is something that people have really been wanting an update on. Like, it's like uh, this isn't, a, you know, a physical iPhone, so there's not, like, a specific, like, spec update for a camera on an iPhone. However, the camera application has been much like improved. So the the improvements are basically it's faster, and it's also faster to get to the camera. So for example, say you're on your iPhone, right? You have to unlock it. Let's say I want to take a picture. Something's happening right now, and I can't miss it. All right, we'll see. You gotta unlock your iPhone. You gotta go here, and then you gotta come up here to the camera app. Now watch how slow this is gonna be for the first generation iPhone. Whew. Oh wants to use my location but there you go then you can take your picture and then you're off but now what they've done is now when you do um, the lock screen you simply double tap and a camera button appears here and then you tap that and you're immediately in the camera even if you have a passcode set you don't have to enter a passcode however you can't see you can't get anywhere else but the camera and you can't see any other images other than the ones you just took so that's also very cool that you know the Apple kept security in mind there they you know they didn't just like eliminate the passcode or anything that there's you know they're they're still very uh, aware of security. And one thing that <laughs> they said during the keynote and people absolutely loved it is that you can take a cam you can take a picture with the actual physical power up button because there is no camera button on an iPhone. The only physical buttons are the home button right there at the bottom, the power button, and the volume up and down, and the the ringer um, vibration switch also the orientation lock on the newer iOS devices so this may be hints that Apple might be adding a dedicated camera button simply because you know if you're trying to take a picture of something like in front of you to do this and then have to kind of look like here's the home button that's the center so I have to go up a little bit and then I can tap it to take the picture instead of that you can be like alright well here's the button bam so it's just much easier now if to have that physical button so I do think that Apple might definitely consider putting a dedicated hardware camera button on the iPhone but I know that's not really their style, so maybe they'll just keep that that once out of the iPhone a clean edge. It's hard to say, but I do think a lot of people would like it if they did add it. But people really love that in the keynote that you could take a picture with the volume up button. But one thing that does concern me about that is, you know, if you have headphones on and you want to take a picture, will it turn your music up? You know, if you want more volume. So we'll have to see how that works. They've also added pinch to zoom on the camera, so um, you can just right in the camera app, you just do a pinch and you can zoom in to your picture or whatever video you're taking. They also added grid lines to obey like the rule of thirds, what you have in your shot, what's centered. So it's kind of like a hashtag or a pound sign on the screen. So you can see like when it's centered. Like I said, the rule of thirds not to get like too close and to have the specific things in your shot. If you're really into photography or anything, that's really going to help. They also have controls that you know crop, rotate, all that other stuff. And they also have some like built-in photo editing, such as red eye reduction. You can change the saturation and the hue of colors in the picture. So you can get a lot better looking pictures without having to put them on your Mac and open up Pixelmator or Photoshop or use a dedicated um, app for the iPhone or iPod Touch or iPhone. So you can do all that right from the camera app, which is a, a huge time saver. The next update to iOS is Mail. Now they, they really made sure to say that I know this is probably one of the most used uh, applications on a mobile device, 
You know, everyone that has a smartphone pretty much has your email set up on it. It's kind of pointless to have a smartphone without being able to get your email wherever you are. So um, one thing they really made, they made sure that they added, they said it was a small feature, but a lot of people seem to love it, is that you can copy addresses between like the CC, BBC lines, and so you can just copy and paste an address from there to there very easily. You just simply drag it. You don't have to like retype it or copy and paste it. So that's just a very little tweak that will save some time. You can also flag messages so like, oh yeah, I want to check this later. Really, I just mark them as unread, but flagging messages, you know, it's kind of a convenient way to do it. They've also added S-MIME, which I'm not even quite sure I have a full, like, complete grasp of what it is, but I think it's just, like, security, like, your email is, like, all encrypted, so it's a lot harder for a hacker to get a hold of it. They've also added the new search, which searches, they, they added this for uh, mail and Lion, too, I forgot to mention that, but it's, like, a really smart search. So it not only searches, you know, the mail on your phone, but it also searches, you know, the server, like, the, actual, the content of your message. So it, it's a full search, like, a live search, you know, it just searches every single thing. It doesn't just search for topics or things that you have on your computer or in this case your phone. Um, it actually reaches up to like say you have a Gmail account, it reaches up to the Gmail servers and looks for things in your inbox which is a very cool feature. Now this was probably the biggest thing. People heard this like they saw that icon. The wire with the scissors. PC free. So now whenever you buy an iPad or an iPod touch the first thing you see like you're, you're really excited you take it out of the box you power it up and you have to connect it to your computer. You know, you have these devices that are so capable, but the first thing you have to do is connect them to a computer just to use them, which is, I do admit it's kind of stupid. I've never really thought about it like that, but it is pretty stupid. So now you just simply get a welcome screen. You can set up the device right on the device. You no longer have to plug it into your PC or Mac at all. It's just all its own device now. You also get over-the-air Delta updates. So say uh, iOS 4, I'm not even sure what the most recent version is, but just for the sake of the argument, I'm going to say the most recent version is 4.2. So if 4.2.1 comes out, but your iPhone in the box came with 4.2, then you can update just what you don't have. Like, for example, say there's only three changes between 4.2 and 4.2.1. You'd only have to update the few little things, and it's right onto the device, sort of like the Mac App Store. You can just download wirelessly right to the device. So these the updates are now over the air completely, so you can update your iPod, your iDevice right on the go without having to plug into iTunes and click update. And you only have to download the few little things that you don't have present in that update. The next update they had was Game Center. Now they made sure to mention that you know it's very, very popular. It has 50 million unique users. And so they put that into perspective for us very nicely. The Game Center has been around for what, like around a year or so-ish, give or take. I think they said nine months in the keynote. And Xbox Live, you know, a full-fledged gaming console has been around for, what, eight years. Now, they have 30 million users on Xbox Live. iOS has 50 million users. That just goes to show you how popular iOS is. Um, and it's mainly because Xbox Live isn't free. If, if it was free, I'm sure they would have a lot more people. Everyone that had an Xbox would be on Xbox Live. However, Game Center is a free, you know, a free thing. And you know, the apps, the games that you play are very cheap, so... It's going to be the winner. And they've also added sort of a game discovery. This is sort of like Genius on iTunes. Whenever you play a song, you can activate the Genius sidebar and it says, oh, check out these songs. They're kind of the same. You know, it's like the same genre and it'll link you to right to a bunch of different songs by different artists that you might like. So it's kind of like that. You know, it's a new way to discover games. It's kind of like Genius was a way to discover music. So that'll be cool for if people are just looking for a game and they'll take it right to the app store and you can buy it. The last thing they came out with for iOS was iMessage. Now in the keynote, they said that, you know, Every iOS user on the iPhone was happy with the messaging client. You know, they loved it. It was very easy. But then they said, well, our iPhone customers love it. But what about our iPad and our iPod Touch users? You know, it's not as easy. It's not as convenient because they don't have the same benefits as the iPhone does. So now they came up with an iMessage uh, application that works across all iOS devices. So they all run the same application. And it's sort of like an iChat interface. If you have OS X, open up iChat. You, know, you can connect to AIM, I believe. I don't think you can do MSN, but you can do like Jabber, I think. There's just a few different um, little clients you can connect to, but with an iChat. But um, iChat, you know, it kind of works kind of like AIM. So if you're uh, messaging someone on your iPhone and messaging someone else that's on their iPad, so you you send them a message, you get a delivery receipt so that you know that they got that message. You also get a receipt of when it's read. So when they actually say that um, Johnny Appleseed sent them a message, as soon as they tap the message, you get it and they read it. Um, you get a notification on your device saying that they have read it. And you can also see when they're typing. It's like when they're replying to you, you can say, oh, I'm going to be getting a message pretty soon here. So it's nice to know that, you know, they actually got your message. Sometimes, 
like on my uh, Verizon phone, I don't have it here, it's just a little NV3. But um, sometimes I don't even know if people get my messages or not. There's no way, real way to tell. This works over 3G and Wi-Fi, so you can message pretty much anyone on the go, which is just absolutely great. You know, it's kind of like a futuristic sort of thing just to be messaging wherever you are. So uh, this application will definitely work very good. You could send videos, you could send pictures, and just text. So this will work very well. And that's pretty much all I have for the iOS portion. That's all they announced during the keynote. I have heard rumors since, though, that they will be coming out with FaceTime for 3G. So now we're into real Jetson sort of stuff. You know, you could just FaceTime with anyone, anywhere you have a cell signal. So that'd be absolutely insane. But so that's pretty much it. Those are the main features of iOS. This definitely, like, I've wanted an, uh, an iPhone for a long time. But all these features, you know, especially like the iMessage, the faster camera, PC free, and like I'll be talking about in my next video, the iCloud and the syncing, it just absolutely makes me want an iPhone so much more. I'm definitely going to try to get one this fall. And if I do, I'll be sure to have a lot of content for you guys about it. But that, like I said, that's pretty much all I can say for this video. Overall, a very good portion of the keynote for iOS. Some very, very big updates. A lot of things people wanted. Apple is definitely listening to their consumers. And so hopefully a lot of people will be happy and will be looking forward to iOS 6. So that's pretty much it. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Go ahead and check me out. Also check out my previous video, which was my, on WWDC Mac OS X Lion. Go ahead and check that out. My next video will be on iCloud, and that's going to be my final, that's going to be like part 3 of 3 for WWDC 2011. So I guess that's it. Also check out iTechCity.org, also at iTechCity on Twitter. And before I ramble anymore, thanks for watching. Up to the top right, and you just drop in there, and it creates a whole new space. And so you can create phases on the fly very easily. And it all goes, comes right back to the gestures.